What's up mini truck lovers, JCM Fix back again with another edition of the Daihatsu Hijet Upgrade. Now, today what we're going to do is find out what we can do to get this transmission to shift. Currently, I'm finding that this 1995 Daihatsu has a power button right below the dash cluster, but when I click it, nothing happens. Let me show you. First, I'll go ahead and place the key into the ignition and start it. It starts up wonderfully fine. So now I'll go ahead and simply press the power button and look at that. Nothing. Nothing comes on the dash in regards to power. Okay, then you say, go ahead JCM Fix, put it in the gear and let's see what happens. Alright, let me turn off the power button once again. Go ahead and put this down and put it in the gear. Alright, now I'm in the gear. Press the power button. Once again, nothing happens. Alright, so what could be the issue? Uh oh. We have another. Oh man, we're about to get interrupted once again. All right, let's get this explanation in there. How you doing today, sir? Man. How you doing? I talked to you about this, uh, the, your Century, about two or three weeks ago. You did? Yes. Yeah. What's up with it? Uh, where did you get this? This from Japan. So, how much did it set you back? Uh, it's upwards of around four or five thousand. Okay. Does it got the three cylinder in it? Yes, it does. All right. Yeah. Now, is this is this a Japanese or a Korean made? Japanese. The whole thing. Yes. Wow. Yes. So what do you plan on using it for? I'm just curious. I'm just driving it. Just it's driving good. It? It's good on gas. It's so groceries, is, mulch. is the state gonna let? Is it? Does this fall under the antique? No, it could. But I have a, pl a plate already in the. You already back. got it already. It's already it? registered. Yes. Wow. Yeah, I could have an antique, but. That's the worst thing to do because you can't drive it. That's right. You don't drive it two or three days a month or something like that. Not even that. Only for special events. Right. Um, circus. What, what so do you there's doing? even more control on it now yeah, than there used to be. Yeah. You like you only can drive it, like um, whenever you're doing the um, like events. Okay. Car shows. Right. Or if you're just fixing it and you're just driving it around just to see if it's still working. But other than that, it essentially has to stay parked. Okay. So there's no point in making an antique. So. What is, is this a, is this Toyota? Is this Nissan? Is this uh, it's a Daihatsu? So it's a Daihatsu. Mm. Okay. All right. So how, um, how are you going to source parts? I guess um, is the best question. So like currently I have an issue where my transmission module inside of here, I don't know if you can see it back there is messed up. So what I, it's like a, a box back there. Yes. Computer. So I'm about to take that out right now okay. and desolder the capacitors and put it in myself. So, so I got it from like Amazon. And then from there, um, my transmission will start shifting normally because right now it's not shifting. It's I'm not shifting at all. No, okay. I'm, I'm stuck in lip mode. So, <laughs> it sucks. Yeah, so right now I'm finally about to do that. Take this off, take this off, take that bad boy out right. and desolder and resolder some new capacitors. So, um, did you have it shipped here mm. or did you have... Okay, all right, you so have that, to. that kills that. that kill, I'll just, yeah. I, I, like I said, I'd love to get my hands on one. I, oh, I really? Live up, I live up on the mountain. Oh. This is perfect for running around the neighborhood. If I want to go down to the creek... Or I want to go up to the pool. It's not that I don't need to walk. I mean, I'm a fat fucker, but, <laughs> no. I, you know, but it's still, it, it just makes it a little bit easier to do certain things. Right, you know? absolutely. Like mulch, showing, um, planting and gardening. So when I do get the mulch and then whatever, I can just do this real so simple. So what's, the, I have to ask, what's the top speed? 45? Uh, it's 140, which is almost. Oh my God. It, 140 kilometers per right, hour. Right, 60. So, 100 is 60. So that's around like. 78 80 but obviously you wouldn't want to go that far no. fast so i i've gone around 72 comfortably miles per okay, hour no pro okay yeah no All problem right. i'll let you right. know I, I, just, I, know. I, I saw you i saw the century yeah like i said i had the, I had a green super and I've, I've got i used really? to drive commercial so mm. i have black tags with yellow numbers which really? is which commercial vehicle in city centers it's the only right. place you're allowed with oh, that really? type of vehicle okay so I, and I had a custom made I, I don't know what it says but i just said look this is what i want right so when you said that was a 70 something i said like, oh no God, I, 92 oh that's a 92 yes. I, okay i thought you said 72 no. my head was going 92 was 95 it's 95 that, <laughs> i don't I, I you know most people <laughs> how rare that vehicle is right i, I leave it parked because the gas is this horrendous <laughs> My friend's driving this. I mean, yeah, it's like, it costs more to start it than to look at it. Yeah, I, I don't start it to go yeah. to Walmart. I rather walk. Well, yeah, and so <laughs> now this will be my Walmart vehicle. Yeah, <laughs> perfect. It that's, sips. Same here. That's right. I, that's what I'm looking for. You exactly. Know, get a small bag of groceries at Aldi's. Go right back home. That's exactly. What I'm looking for. Exactly. Thanks again. I All appreciate right. your time. No worries. Have Thank a blessed you. day. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>
He said he found a new toy. <laughs> All right, back to the experiment. So as you see, the power button did not make any type of illumination on the cluster panel. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and remove this entire cluster, remove this trim panel piece here and try to go in the back and try to remove the I don't know if you can see the black box back there, but that is the transmission control computer assembly right back there. It's a black box with a blue sticker with white lettering right back in there. The electrolytic capacitors within that computer assembly go bad after a while. So I'm not going to remove the entire dash, but I will remove the cluster and I'll go back there, get into the computer and replace those five electrolytic capacitors to see if I can get that power button working. And once that power button works, I know that I'll essentially be out of limp mode and I won't be stuck in essentially third gear the entire time I'm ready to get my gas mileage back. Let's do it But before I move forward, I do want to let you know the type of tools that I will be using I do have some trim panel removers a small five-piece reversible ratchet offset tool regular screwdrivers small screwdrivers and another small ratcheting wrench simple household tool set that definitely you can use for any occasion and if I do use any of the other items I'll definitely make sure I'll place a link down below within the description or a link for its variant that will allow you to comfortably purchase exactly what I'm using in order to get this job done yourself for your Daihatsu high jet or mini truck let's do it to start this off, we're going to go ahead and just use a regular screwdriver. And from there, we're going to go ahead and remove these two screws right here. That's one. And that's two. Let's go ahead and set these aside. I can go ahead and place it right in there. Next up, we're going to go ahead and use our trim panel remover and just work our way around. All right, look at that. Came off super easy. From here, we're going to go ahead and disconnect our four-wheel drive switch. Just go ahead and push down and pull out just like this. Super easy. Now let's go ahead and lift this panel away. Wow, look at that dust from 1995. Next up to completely remove this instrument cluster panel, we're gonna go ahead and remove these three screws. One right here, here, and there. Let's do it. Definitely make sure you have a screwdriver with some type of magnetic tip. Works like a charm. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and gently pull this back, just like this. So keep in mind, it's kind of tight. It has some wires back there, so you don't wanna pull on it too hard. And at this stage, I found a way to cheat. So what we're gonna do, instead of pulling this out and disconnecting the entire cluster, there's really no need to do that. So what we're gonna do is just pull this out just a little bit and just cant it to the side, just like this. Just to provide enough space to get to those screws right here and one down there. All right, and so now that it's canted, now you can go ahead and get a small ratcheting wrench with a 10 millimeter socket head and go to town on those two screws to remove it. Let's do it. So from here, I'm just gonna go ahead and stick my hand right in there and ratchet away. Then you can use your hands to just go ahead and finish it off. All right, ah, see that? That's one screw. I did not have to remove the dash or unscrew this cover at all. The second one is a little bit hard to get to right down there, but we can do it. We're going to do the exact same thing. For this one, I'm just going to go ahead and stick my hand all the way through there and come in from the bottom to provide a little bit of stability. I'll try to give you a closer view. 
right down in there. You see it? You see my ratcheting wrench? Right there. So you're just gonna ratchet until it's off. And here we go. I was able to get it right there. Let it fall down into your hand. All right, now it's removed. Now all I gotta do is just go ahead and unclip it at the bottom. Push in and pull out. You can do it with one hand. Once you push in, you'll be able to just pull the transmission thing out, just like that. All right, now it's disconnected. See? You do not need to remove the entire dash at all. It's off. Super easy. That's one. And so there's two clips. Once you push in and pull out, you have one more to go. And for the second one, same thing. It's easier just to come in from the bottom and just do that. Push in and pull out. There we go. It is out. Ah, get my hand out. So if anyone's wondering the bottom, this is the bottom. You just kind of got to just kind of got to stick your hand right up in there. It works. All right, this is it, guys. This is the transmission control computer assembly for this 1995 Daihatsu Hijack. Now, let's go ahead and open this bad boy up. All right, now we're inside. So the next thing we need to do is remove this metal casing. All right. Hear that click? Just like that, super easy. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is, if you have a Dremel tool, you can just go ahead and use a Dremel to kinda char at this particular portion here and stop like right before you get to the IMST. So you're gonna do it from here, here, and then we'll be able to go inside and take a look at the capacitors. All right, so instead of a Dremel, what I'm gonna do is use a 20 volt multi cutting tool. So this has a sharp edge, so all I'll do is just press this in. As you see, I'll be able to go straight through this casing without a problem, let's do it. All right, so here goes the front and here goes the back. So as you can see, I use these 10 pound weights for pressure and counter pressure. I have it set to level four. Smell that plastic. Let's get some more stability. All right, let's go across the top. And now the other side. Crack that open just like that. We're almost there, so I'm definitely gonna need to take off this top side as well. Look how that hard plastic melts on my multi-tool. That's it. Let's look at what we did, and nice. Super nice. So as you can see, I did not damage the motherboard at all. I have some pieces in there, but that's perfectly fine. So you definitely wanna watch out to make sure you don't pierce anything, because if you do, you're pretty much donezo when it comes to this particular transmission control computer assembly. So just go ahead and remove all these pieces out of here so it doesn't disrupt any of the electrodes and I think you're good to go. Look at that. All right. All right, now that we have the assembly open, I'm gonna go ahead and show you the five capacitors that need attention. So we have this 22 microfarads, 35 volt one right here, that's one. We have two. And we have a 10 microfarad right down here with 16 volts, three, four, and another 22 right there. So five. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove all five of these surface mounted electrolytic capacitors and replace them with one of the same size microfarads, but with more volts. Keep in mind, the volts don't really matter as long as you match it to whatever it was before. As you can see before with the 22 microfarads, we have 35 volts. 
I was only able to find one with 50 volts. It doesn't hurt it or help it in any way, so it should work without a problem. All right, and also I have the 10 microfarads with also a size of 50 volts as well. All right, so what I'm gonna do is use these long reach pliers with a 90 degree tip. Go down within the assembly, use the force removal method by just go ahead and clamping down on it just like this and twisting. Just like this, side to side, until it eventually comes off. Just like that. That's it, that's how it looks. And so we have a bottom base right there, and we're just gonna remove that. All right, and that looks pretty clean. But before you do anything, make sure you definitely take note of the polarity of each and every one of the capacitors. So when you see this stripe on the left, that means that this one was negative and this one is positive. So just make sure when you're installing a new one that you put it back the way it's supposed to be. All right, let's do the other ones. See how clean it comes off very easily. Let's do our tens. Super easy. And last one, another 22. As you can see, these stems of these capacitors are completely rusted out. They stood no chance. Definitely gonna have to clean these up. So in order to prep it for the new capacitors, I first need to get my soldering iron and properly tin it. So once I properly tin it, I can make sure that there's no contaminants that will go into my new solders. So in order to properly tin this tip, what I'm gonna do is get some rosin paste flux, a damp sponge, some steel wool, and some lead solder. From there, I'll wrap this solder around the tip of this pointed piece. But make sure you do this before you plug it in. So now go ahead and plug it in. Eventually you'll see that this will essentially melt down from the tip. Don't worry, this board is useless, so I'll place it right here. And as you can see, the solder is definitely dripping right off of the tip. Ensure that you have yourself a small fan like a Vornado to ensure that the fumes from the solder doesn't come into your mouth or your nose. And just like that, it is being tinned and you can see the silver right on it. It is definitely evaporated super quick. And once it melts off completely, now we're gonna go ahead and use our rosin flux paste. And so now what we're gonna do is very carefully wipe the tip off with the steel wool. Be careful not to burn your fingers. Okay, now we're gonna dip it into our rosin paste. All right, we're sending some smoke signals, but don't worry. All right, and then carefully go ahead and place more solder into the tip, just like that. All right, one more time. All right, once again, be careful you don't burn your fingers. Slowly getting there. And wow, look at that. Look how shiny it is. And now we have a perfectly tinned tip. Let me go ahead and zoom in on that. As you can see, the different color between the tip and the other portion. Okay, and with this properly tinned tip, this will definitely help create a nice solid solder joint once we get to soldering. All right, now we're ready to prep our board. And if you want to, if there's any residue left on it, you can use your damp sponge to wipe it away or you can use a damp towel if that's all that you have. And now to start our prep, we're gonna use our nicely tinned soldering iron to remove the legs from the older solders. And we'll also be using the tip to push back the black goo so we can at least get some type of nice connection. So let's try that. It does not want to come apart easily, so I'm just continuing to press down on it so I can expose the positive and negative terminals. I don't want to disrupt the glue from the other parts, but I at least want to get to my terminal. Alright guys, I tried my best with this board. It was seriously hard because of this black goo 
So essentially what I was doing was just getting this soldering iron and just kind of heating up the element and trying to open up these particular terminals. I did a pretty good job essentially right here and right there and then right here and right here. So it's almost like partially open, but I'm sure I could still get a good connection from there and right here and right there. So these ones right here are already open, so I shouldn't have a problem there. Um, and so let's see, this one's still kind of blocked, but I don't know. I did have an issue where I think one of these small little parts right here that was over here fell off when I was kind of chalking away at it. So hopefully that doesn't affect the transmission, um, but that is essentially what happened. Um, to me, so one of these things are, are off right here around here But let's see so I'll go ahead and try to solder it with what I see here All right, let's do it. And so at this point what we want to do is go ahead and get some 91% isopropyl alcohol and just dab it on the board at the spots where I was essentially jarring at it so this will kind of clean the area to prep it to get ready for some rosin paste do keep in mind, I do have rosin core solder, so I don't really need to put any paste on the board, but we'll see if I, if I need to or not. So let's just go ahead and see the dirt. Just use this isopropyl alcohol to clean the area on all the terminals that you will be putting the solder on. All right, guys, I'm back, but I went out and bought a Weller soldering kit. So I pretty much got the scratch pad and I also got the Weller tip tinner so this will allow me to clean my tips more effectively than i did earlier so i'm going to go ahead and move to a cone shaped tip and as you can see it has a little bit of oxidation or just not rust but a little bit of residue from the last time i used it but this is the best one to use for these particular boards right here so i'm just going to go ahead and install it right now and then heat it up a little bit and then dip it in here a couple of times tin it with this, put some little rosin paste on it and just do it over and over and over until I can get this perfectly clean. And let's do it. All right, just go ahead and place it in just like this. Flathead head screwdriver, twist down. Now go ahead and turn the unit on. And so what I'll do is I'll let it heat up just for about five minutes and then I'll just go ahead and dip it in here and then go back and forth until I feel comfortable that it's completely clean. Let's go ahead and dip it into the rosin paste. That's smooth. Let it sit for a while. And let's go ahead and just dip it in there just like this. And look at that already, it's already become clean. Super, super easy, super fast. And I'm just gonna go ahead and twist it in just like this just to get it to go all around. And just continue going like this. Wow. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is, as I'm soldering, I'm going to dip it in here pretty much after every joint. This way it can remain clean and fresh for the next joint. Let's go ahead and tin it. So keep in mind, anytime you're storing your tip after usage, make sure you properly tin it before you put it away. Tin it one last time before I start to solder. All right, let's do it. All right, the first one I'm gonna tackle is this one right here. Remembering this side is negative and this side is positive. So I'll go ahead and get my 22 microfarads C-zone capacitors. And as you can see here, it's labeled negative on the gray side and it's positive on the black side. And as you can see, the positive essentially will always be longer than the negative on these type of capacitors. So what I'm gonna to need to do is I'm gonna to need to trim it down the size. First, let me go ahead and turn it upside down to see pretty much how long the legs could and should be. Wow, not that long. I'll start right around here. So as you can see, there's a little space as it's standing. So what I'm gonna to try to do, I'm gonna to try to bend it like feet, just like a little bit, just like a tiny bit so it can essentially sit on top of these particular pads. Just try to bend it just a tad bit like that. A tad bit like this. So it has something to sit on. Okay, so that's how I'm going to try to install it. Just so I can sit in there just like that. 
All right, the first thing I must do is pre-tin the actual pads. So what I'm gonna do is put two bubbles of solder, one right here and then one right there. And so from there, I can just go ahead and push the actual legs into those pads. First, let me go ahead and get a little bit of rosin paste flux and place it right there on the board so it can be a little bit better adhesion. Yes, my rosin core solder does have rosin in it, but I'd rather just have a little bit of paste on there. So let's go ahead and pre-tin it. So from here, we're gonna go ahead and heat the pad first and then place the solder right there just to put a little bubble on it. Right there, just like that. I'm gonna let that cool. We're gonna do the same thing to the negative side. But before I do that, let's do this. Let's clean it off. I want a fresh joint every single time. Right there. All right, now let's put those legs on. All right, so I'll use my long reach pliers with a 90 degree tip to go ahead and place this right into its spot. Once again, as you can see, this is the negative side. I'll go ahead and start with that side first. Heat it up first and place it in. So what I did is I went ahead and pretty much created my own type of workbench. It was essentially super hard to have one hand on the soldering iron and one hand on the actual electrolytic capacitor. So what I did is I got these long reach pliers, put a rubber band at the end, and this way I can essentially open and close this. So what I did is I got some weights, put it right here, and this way I can actually essentially position the actual capacitor right into place. I already tinned it, like I mentioned before, I tinned the actual boards, the joint, and then you just place it on and you just go ahead and solder it again. So I did this one already, and now I need to do the other one. So okay, remember this is negative and this is positive. So this is the 22 microfarads, and this is also another 22 microfarads there as well. All right, so I just gotta finish the other ones. Four more to go. There we go, now it's nice and properly tinned. Let's go ahead and heat it up. Nice. All right, looks good enough. So let's see if it holds without the pliers. Let's go ahead and pull on it a little bit. Perfect, super hard, super hard. Let's hope there's enough contact. You know, I'm definitely trying to solder it the best that I can. So it looks like there's a lot of strength in regards to these pins being on the actual joints. Let's move to the 10 microfarads right there. And after you give it some time to cool, just go ahead and use some isopropyl alcohol in that area to ensure that any lingering residue is off of the board. Just a little bit, like that. Let's take all this off. See that? Let's get all that off. Let's see if it sticks. Yes, pretty strong. All right, last one. Now back to the 22 microfarads. So it's strong. All right, that does it. So what I'm gonna do is just gonna lightly tape the top cover on top of it and go ahead and put it back in the car and see. I'm not really sure how this will work because I do remember that I took away some of these splines by mistake because I was being kind of harsh. So these little splines here, like two of them have been removed, so I'm not sure if that will affect the shifting or not. And if overall, if it doesn't work, I will just see if I can order another transmission control computer from Japan and go on from there. But this is how you do it, guys. So it's not hard, it's not easy. You just need a steady hand and a nice workbench, and I'm sure you can get to it as well. Right. Now it's time to just go ahead and place this back on. So, and just put some tape around it. Just put it just like this. Just go ahead and place them just like this. And one more side. Alright. Here. Alright, that's it. No need to wrap it all around. I'm sure the components inside will be totally safe. And let's make sure these clamps are free so it can clamp right into its holding brackets. Alright, let's go ahead and place it right back into the car and see what it does. Alright, now back to the high jet. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to attach it to this bracket just yet. So what I'm going to do is just place these two wires 
right into the actual computer assembly and then turn it on and see if the power button illuminates. And if it doesn't, I'll take it for a quick drive to see if I need to get it to above a certain speed first. Um, and if it doesn't illuminate, then fine, but hopefully um, it will at least shift. If it shifts, then I'm fine without the power button working. But like I said, I know that there were some splines that were removed and that probably hampers my computer module assembly from working for the transmission. So if it doesn't work, I'll just order a new one from one of the Japanese websites. So we'll see. All right, just for frame of reference, as you can see, there goes the wires right back there. That's where I'll be plugging in the transmission control module computer assembly. Right back there, those two wires. Let's do it. All right, and I'll just stick my hand underneath and just connect those two connections right there. All right, I went ahead and connected those two harnesses right in there. So we are good to go to go ahead and start and see if it works. All right, moment of truth. And then let's look at the power button. Now you know how to fix it. All right, guys, have a blessed day.